Live from San Francisco, it's The Cube. Covering Informatica World 2017. Brought to you by Informatica. Hey, welcome back everyone. Live here in San Francisco, Informatica World 2017. This is The Cube's exclusive coverage from SiliconANGLE Media. I'm John Furrier, host of The Cube with my co-host Peter Burris, head of research at SiliconANGLE Media, also general manager of wikibon.com, doing all the cutting edge research on data, data value, what's it mean, cloud, et cetera. And check it out at wikibon.com. Next guest is Suresh Menon, who's the SVP and general manager of Master Data Management at Informatica. The key to success, the central brains, MDM, Great, hot area. Sir Gash, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Thank you for having me. So, MDM has been in almost all the conversations we've had, some overtly and some kind of implied through, through it. Take a minute to describe what you're managing and what the role is in the, that data fabric, in that data 3.0 vision. Why master data management is so important? Right. Uh, if you think about master data management, uh, you know there are, there are two ways to look at it. The first one would be uh, in terms of MDM, uh, first of all the definition. Master data is really about all the business critical entities that any organization is, uh, you know, should be concerned about. Uh, so if you think about customers and products, that's uh, you know, the two most critical ones, uh, and that's really where master data management began. Uh, but then you could, should also think about employees, locations and channels, uh, uh, suppliers, as all being the business critical entities that every, every organization should care about. Master data management is about making sure that you have the most trusted, authoritative, and consistent data about these entities, which can then fuel the rest of your enterprise. Uh, MDM has been used in the past to, uh, to fulfill certain specific business objectives or outcomes, uh, such as improving customer centricity, making sure that uh, you're onboarding suppliers with a minimal amount of risk, uh, and also to make sure that your products, as being described and syndicated out to the web, are you, done in the most You guys had an manner. industry perspective uh, Monday night yeah. What was the insight from the industry? I mean, how is the industry, because Beano Peter's got a, a, a perspective on this, he thinks uh, there's opportunities, big time to reposition kind of how this is thought, but what's the industry reaction to MDM? The industry reaction, there's a renewed excitement in MDM. Uh, you know, MDM started off about 10 years ago. Uh, it were, uh, you know, a lot of early adopters were there, and as is usual with a lot of early adopters, there was a quick uh, dip into the, into the uh, uh, cycle of disillusionment. <laughs> uh, what we've seen over the last couple of years and the excitement from Monday is the resurgence about MDM and looking at MDM as being a force of disruption for the digital transformation that most organizations are going through and actually being at the, at the center of that, of that uh, disruption. Well, it's interesting, I almost liken this to, I'm not a physicist, I wish I was perhaps, but <laughs> um, phys physics encounters a problem and then people look at this problem and they say, oh my goodness, that's, how are we going to solve that? And then somebody says, oh, I remember a math technique that I can apply to solve this problem and it works beautifully. I see MDM almost in the same situation. Oh, we've got this enormous amount of data, it's coming from a lot of different sources, how do we reconcile all those sources? Oh, what a oh wait a minute, we had this MDM thing a number of years right. ago, how about if we took that MDM and tried to apply it to this problem, would it work? And it seems to fit pretty nicely now. Do you agree with that? I agree with that. There's also, uh, although, you know, a, a kind of a redefinition of MDM, because sometimes when you look at what people think about, oh that was MDM from seven years ago, how does that apply to the problems I'm dealing with today, with uh, you know, IoT data, social network data, interaction data that I need to make sense of, was an MDM for the structured world? Right. Uh, and how does it apply for the new world? And this is really the, the third phase of, of MDM, uh, you know, going from batch analytics, fueling all real-time applications, uh, you know, whether it was marketing, customer service, and so on, and now to be a, to providing the context and the, that is necessary to connect dots across mm -hmm. this billions and billions of, of, of data that uh, that is coming in, and being able to provide that insight and the outcome that organizations are hoping well, to achieve by bringing see, all this You together. mentioned, I just want to jump in for a second, because you mentioned um, unstructured data, <coughs> and also the speed of data, getting the value, so data as a service, these trends are happening, right? So you have, the role of data isn't just, okay, unstructured, now deal with it. Right. You got to be ready for any data injection to an application being available. Yes. I mean, that's a big fact too, isn't it? Ab absolutely, and organizations are looking at, uh, at what used to be you know, a batch process that could run overnight, to now saying, I'm getting this data in real time, and I need to be able to act on it act on it right now. Uh, and this could be organizations saying, I'm using MDM to connect all of this interaction data that's coming in, and being able to make the right offer to that customer before my competition can. Uh, so making that, shortening that time between getting a signal 
to actually going out and making the most relevant offer has become crucial. Uh, and it also applies to other things such as you identify risk across any part of your, your organization, being able to act upon that in real time as opposed to find out later uh, and pay the expense. So I, and I know this is not a perfect way of thinking about it, but it's, it perhaps will be a, a nice metaphor for introducing what I'm going to say. I've always thought about MDM as the system of record for data. Yes. Right? And as we think about digital business, and we think about going after new opportunities and new types of customers and new classes of products, we now have to think about how we're going to introduce and translate the concepts of design into data. So we can literally envision having a, what that new system of record for data is going to look like. What will be the role of MDM as we start introducing more design principles into data? Here's where we are, here's where we need to be, here's how we're going to move, and MDM being part of that change process. Is that, is that something you foresee for MDM? A absolutely, and, uh, you know, and, and also the definition of, you know, MDM in the past used to be considered as, let's take a, a, a small collection of slowly changing attributes, yeah. and that's what we master for through the course of time. Uh, instead now, MDM is becoming in this digital age. As you're bringing in tens of thousands of attributes even across, of, of a, a, about a customer and a supplier, MDM being part of that process that can grow, and at the same time, the small collection of attributes important as a kernel inside of uh, you know, this, this information, it's that kernel that provides the, the connection, the missing link, if you will, between, across all of these. And absolutely, it's a journey uh, that uh, MDM can fuel. And I, I, we think that's crucially important. So for example, if, what we like to say is we can demarcate the industry, or we think we're in the middle of a demarcation point, I guess I should say, where for the first 50 years, we had known process, unknown technology. Right. Now we're looking at known technology, generally speaking, but extremely unknown process. Let me explain what I mean by that. That we used to have very stylized, as you said, structured data. Accounting is a stylized data form, slow moving changes, et cetera. And that's what kind of MDM was originally built for, to capture that system of record for those things. Now we're talking about trying to create digital twins of real world things right. that behave inconsistently, that behave unpredictably, especially human beings. And now we're trying to capture more data about them and bring them into the system. Highly unstructured, highly uncertain, learning and training. So help us connect this notion of machine learning, artificial intelligence back to MDM and how do you see MDM evolving to be able to take this massive new and uncertain types of data but turn it into assets very quickly. Absolutely, it's a, it's a crucial part of what, MD, what MDM is all about today and going, going forward into the future. It is the combination of both the, the metadata understanding about what, what it is that these data sets are going to be about and then applying uh, artificial intelligence through machine learning on top of it so that the, the MDM was always about well curated data. How can you curate data by human curation, how is that possible when you've got these real-time uh, you know, transactions coming in at such high, high speed and such high volume? Uh, this is where artificial intelligence can detect uh, you know, those streams, be able to infer the relationships across these different steam streams, uh, and then be able to allow for that kind of relationship exploration and persistence, which is key to, to all of this. Um, so, completely new algorithms that are that, that are being built now. Uh, in, in that order augments to make sure. enhanced master data or the abstracts it away? What's the impact? Like Claire, for instance, what's right. the impact of MDM? Th th three, are more relevant, less relevant? More even, even more relevant and three key areas of, of, of relevance. Number one is, uh, is about automating the initial putting together about MDM and then also automating the the, the ongoing maintenance, reacting to changes both within the organization and outside the organization, and being able to learn from uh, you know, previous such interactions and making MDM self-configuring. Uh, the second part of it is stewardship. If you think about MDM in the past, it was, you, know, you always had stewards, a small number of stewards in an organization who would go out and curate this data. Uh, as we now have tens of thousands of business users across the organization saying, I want to interact with this master data, I have a role to play here. Um, for, for those business users now, uh, you, have, you have tens of thousands of them, and then thousands and thousands of attributes. Machine learning is the only way that you can stop this data explosion from causing a human explosion in terms yeah, of how do you down. manage this. Yeah, 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 yeah no, because so, so MD, just to, let me test this, or MDM both 
is going to be improved through these technologies, but MDM also has to capture yes. these crucial new sources of data and represent new them metadata, to the business. Right? There's, yeah, all these artificial intelligence systems and machine learning stuff is going to be generating data that has to be captured somehow, and MDM exactly. is a crucial part of that. Right. So, so many, let me ask you a question. Uh, to boil this, if we can boil this down really simply, <laughs> he's excited about MDM. I, I'm, I'm, look, I'm excited <laughs> about data. This is so. This is so. If we if we kind of think about this, we had an accounting system. It, 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 well, let me step back. In the world where we were talking about hard assets. We had an accounting system that had a fixed asset module. Mm -hmm. So we put all our assets in there, we put depreciation schedules on it, we said, okay, who's got what, who owns it, all these other things. Is MDM really become the data asset, uh, the data asset system within the business? Is that, is that too far a leap for you? I, I don't think so. I mean, if you think about, uh, if master data was all about making sure that the business critical data, everything that the organization runs on, the business is running on, and now if you think of that, that's the data that's going to fuel or enable this digital disruption that these organizations want, you know, want to do with, with their data, MDM is at the heart of that. Yeah. Uh, and you know, finally, the last piece, I think you, to your point about the artificial intelligence, the third part of where MDM increases its relevance is you have the insight now, the data is being put together, we've curated that data, we've discovered those relationships through machine learning, what next? What's next is really about not just putting that data in the hands of a user or inside of a consuming application, but instead recommending what that application or user needs to do with that data. Uh, yeah. So, you know, predict what the next uh, product is that a customer is going to buy and make that, you know, next best offer recommendation to a system or a user. So uh, you're the GM now, okay, you got the, you got the view of the landscape, you got a business to run, charge customers for the product, subscription, cloud, on-premise license, Evolving, you got a new CMO. You got to now snap into the storyline. Yeah. What's your role in the storyline? Obviously, the story's going to be coherent around one big message, and it's going to be the new logo we see behind here. What's your what's your contribution to the story, and how are you guys uh, keeping in cadence with the new marketing mission? Oh, you know, this has been a, a very closely run pro project. Uh, you know, this this entire rebranding. It's not just a, a new logo and a new uh, <laughs> a new font for our, for the company's name. Uh, this has been a process that began many many months ago. Uh, it started from a look at the uh, you know what the what the direction of our products are across MDM. Uh, worked very closely with Sally and her team to uh, to. So come you've been up involved. Absolutely. The yes. board certainly had, both, both board members said they were yes. actively involved as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah this has been a- What a, do you think about it? Are you excited? It's fantastic. Uh, you know, I think uh, you know, it's one of those uh, uh, you know, once in a, in a generation opportunities that we get where we've got such a broad breadth of capabilities across the company uh, and now to be able to tell that story in a, better, in a way that we've never been able to before. So yeah. extremely excited. It's going to help you get some, pull you into the, 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 the wind that's blowing at your back. You guys have great momentum on the product side, congratulations. Now you got the, the brand is going to be building. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so what's the final question? Outlook for next year, how's the business going? You excited by things? Very much so. Uh, you know, MDM has been uh, you know, across the board uh, you know, for, for Informatica, and I'm sure you've seen here at the conference, uh, uh, the interest in MDM, the success stories with MDM, large organizations like Coca-Cola and G redoing the way uh, they do business uh, through, uh, all powered through MDM. Uh, MDM has never been more relevant uh, you know, uh, uh, than it is now. And in the data tsunamis here and coming and not stopping, the waves are hitting, IOT, machine learning, Right, and, and blockchain, yeah. is blockchain, blockchain. Uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, will enable federated MDM. Yeah. Uh, you know, be able to do this uh, on a global scale. Uh, you know, yeah. and master class. We'll have to have you office. come into our studio and do an MDM uh, session. You guys are like, this is a great topic, <laughs> <laughs> Suresh. <laughs> thanks so much for coming on the cube. Really appreciate it, uh, General Manager of the MDM uh, business for Informatica Master Data Management. Um, was once a cottage industry, now full blown. Uh, part of the data fabric at Informatica. Thanks so much for sharing on theCUBE. We're bringing you all the master CUBE interviews here in San Francisco for the CUBE's coverage of Informatica World. Back after this short break, stay with us.